So last week I was having a conversation with someone, a networking conversation, and in the middle of getting to know one another, they said to me, what possible disability could you have looking at you? I can't imagine that you have one. Can you tell me what it is? Now, thinking about that, thinking back to that, there are a lot of people who probably wouldn't feel comfortable being asked such a direct question. And um, if it's your colleague, do not ask them that. It's not legal to do that. Um, but just as an open individual wanting to educate people, uh, for me, it was a really good opportunity to address what was a well-meaning curiosity um, that has the effect of perpetuating a stigma. So I am diagnosed with ADD. I don't have ADHD, I'm not hyperactive, but I was diagnosed with IADD, inattentive ADD, which means that there are some things that growing up and um, even navigating adulthood that were a little bit different for me neurodevelopmentally in terms of how I can organize my thoughts, my space, and how I'm affected in terms of my, um, my senses, so sensory affect. Now, the other thing that I have dealt with in the past are clinical depression at the time when I had it, and I have recovered from that many years ago. Um, and I also have in the past struggled with generalized anxiety a lot of these things can be comorbid and can exacerbate one another if you don't know how to treat or do not get them treated with um, you know, professional services and support. But let's focus on ADD. So these are the types of invisible disabilities and I don't, you know, I struggle with the word disability. There are a lot of, of people in the community that really owns it and I think that's great. Um, I don't like the connotation dis, which it means to be without something. Um, and I think for me personally, I think that other, in, in just saying that there's another way of thinking, of feeling that there is a difference compared to the status quo is more apropos for me. So all I know is that I don't think about having ADD every day. People probably wouldn't even realize or assume that I had it. But I know that there are things that are difficult for me, um, whether or not it's keeping my own schedule or having a strong desire to get one thing done even when I have a lot of other things on my plate and having to basically do mental gymnastics to teach myself how to make sure I keep a system. For me, a lot of times that's pairing things together. So if I'm gonna, um, if I'm going to clean my living room, that means I can simultaneously do other cleaning and I've learned how to maximize the juggling of that so like doing the dishes and putting that away while also um, making sure that my laundry is is done and I move it right when it's full because when I'm either stressed or when I was younger and I didn't have any systems I was such a messy person I, I didn't know how and and that also going back to sensory issues, that also makes it so I can't focus and I can't think. The other ways that I'm really sensitive are in groups, in crowds. So if you know me personally, you know that I'm, uh, I do pride myself in being a great conversationalist, um, but a much better conversationalist when it's one-on-one. -on -one. So when I'm talking to you face-to-face -face or at maximum two people, um, I'm much more comfortable. Uh, I probably wouldn't let anyone know, but even when I have, you know, small gatherings and there's 
more than three or four people um i do get a little bit of stress a little bit of anxiety um and that's just because my my attention is split i'm able to navigate that just based on practice and skill but i'm so hyper aware of everything that goes on around me that it's like sensory overload um i have really great hearing like right now there is a child that i heard scream like three blocks away and i just have to ignore that but that took so much practice and in university i always had um professional services support services i didn't think anything of it i didn't even think about the fact that not everyone uses these it didn't seem like an odd thing to me um but i would get testing in a special room where if I had to take a test, I would be in a separate room where it was a silent room and it was just me in this box. And um, it was because I can hear everyone sniffling and sneezing and the clock ticking and people's pencil scribbling and people tapping their feet. And it drives me mad. I like, I, I'm again, as you get older, you learn how to cope with certain things and therapy helps too. But I was not able to manage these. Um, why am I, so why is this important? Like, why am I even talking about this? Why am I bringing this up? I think people don't realize that when they go to somebody and say, you don't look like you have this, you're immediately invalidating someone's reality uh whether or not it were it were true um it's not really their place to say that you don't look like you have something that isn't a visible trait like it's not something that you can see you can't look at somebody and say they have add they have anxiety unless they are exhibiting symptoms that you know full well that it is um like for me in terms of anxiety i never had panic attacks in public like in front of people in high school if you know we were walking through the hallway and i would only have panic attacks when people cleared the hallways so sometimes i would know i had a crazy amount of anxiety but the release of the pressure would only come out when everyone was gone and the same thing has happened to me in college when i when i was burnt out and i was dealing with depression my anxiety came out in a way where i literally would have to wait for everyone in my apartment complex to leave to go to class before i went to class because i didn't want anyone to see me having anxiety so when people respond that way the social pressure that you feel you're already putting on yourself knowing that you're different knowing that people are asking questions or curious about you in ways that you don't always know the answer you don't always understand what's going on with you you just know that you're you feel different um that you that you can't always understand things the same way that people can but sometimes you understand them in a different way and you can do things better and that luckily has been my experience in my life i'm not saying i'm perfect at anything and this is also why i wanted to have this chat because like people make it seem like i'm perfect but i struggle so much in the best way possible to manage my life because i have I, i'm not neurotypical and and that's okay like i I love that I'm different. Um, it can be hard. It can be hard to motivate myself in the same way that other people might motivate themselves. Um, but I just think it's really important for us to be careful how we're addressing other people. Um, I have such a respect for all individuals from different communities. And as you know, like I'm, I'm trying to get myself more invested in, in communities with visible disabilities because um, it's like the same uh, difficulty 
having people make assumptions about you um but it's a it's a it's a different difficulty having people look at you and think you're perfect and think that you think that everything is so easy for you not realizing that you also maybe have something that you struggle with so long story short not really short but 10 minutes later my point is don't don't make assumptions about anybody don't assume that anyone is doing something so easily um without support without um without need for for a, a, a strategy or plan or or that if if something isn't done perfectly when and you expect it to based on just based on how somebody looks then that's really um it really doesn't make any sense right it doesn't make any sense to assume that somebody just because of how they look that they they have everything put together i try to be very vocal about having iadd because um I don't want people to think I'm perfect or that things are easy for me. Sometimes they are, but um, but I put in a lot of work just to have the energy to focus and do something, even to turn on the camera. Like it's these are little things that for me take a lot of strength and effort um, every day, and I have to always pair it with something that's going to motivate me um that's going to capture my attention whether it's understanding the benefit like the what the gratification will be and really encouraging myself to to focus on that to drive my actions or you know or understanding that someone else is relying on me and that's something I have to work on, but it's it's not all on me. Some of it is because of the way my brain works. So I just wanted to mention that as an observation that <laughs> I had last week and I didn't really know what to say about it after that experience, but I wanted to share with a lot of you who might have experienced that as well. Um, and maybe have never had an opportunity to talk about it. But thanks for listening, and I'll see y'all next time. Keep striving for more.